Okay, so uh, over the past several years, I've put up several catfishing videos that I catch through the ice in the wintertime. And uh, it seems like every time I put these videos up, I always get the same questions, you know, like, where are you catching these things? Uh, what are you using? You know, what, what gear are you using? Um, so I just thought I'd put up a quick video here. So instead of answering the same question over and over again, I can just refer, refer back to this video. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing I want to start with is the lakes or rivers that you're fishing. Uh, that by far is the, the most crucial piece of the puzzle. Um, you really need to go where there's a lot of fish and uh, that's honestly 80% uh, of it, maybe even more. Um, I'll quickly put up uh, on a screen here, I'll put up a bunch of lakes uh, around the Minnesota area that we uh, we like to frequent and uh, you can take a look at those lakes and it really uh, varies from region to region, but uh, I can only put up what I know. So um, next, uh, I want to go through the, the lures we use, or the jigs. This particular one I have tied on right now is what I used last time. It's just this uh, lead head jig. Nothing special about it, uh, other than the fact that it glows. And glowing is a big part of what we do uh, out on the ice, especially in uh, little stained water or after dark, which we seem to have a lot of luck of fishing after dark. Um, but what you want to do is you want to glow these off and you can use a, a small flashlight or I actually use just a headlamp that I have on for, you know, uh, cleaning up at the end of the night. I just have a headlamp on. So, <clears throat> you know, I, I do it as often as I can. Every time the line's out of the water, I glow it or every, uh, you know, 10 to 15 minutes, pull it up and you know, glowed up my headlamp and it seems to make a big difference uh, after doing this many years it it's definitely a factor so make sure you're using a jig that glows and uh, green or red is our favorite but uh, we've also used blue as well so um, uh, next what I'd like to talk about is you know what when we first started doing this we we would uh, just use spoons and jigs and we would actually jig these fish like you would a, a walleye or any other like panfish or whatever um, but what we found over the years is that these fish sometimes are so such light biters is that we've gone to a bobber and this particular one is made by venom bobbers uh, any foam bobber will work I like the ones that you know pull from the bottom so it doesn't freeze up but you can use any slip bobber will work uh, the key is to, to keep this as neutrally buoyant as you can um, in fact, if you can keep it the top of the bobber level with the, the top of the water, that's even perfect. You know, and that's what I like about these venom bobbers is if you change jigs or size of jigs or weight, you can actually adjust this bobber. You know, you can pull it up and push it down. So that adjusts with your size of your jig. That's why I like those. Um, also have the ice buster bobbers, the foam bobbers. We use those a lot too, and those work great. You can just cut those off and you can have a, a size for each jig you use. There it goes. Oh, he's just taking it. There it goes. Fish on. <laughs> nice. And then lastly, uh, the rod. I'm going to be honest with you. Any rod or reel will work. Uh, I've seen them caught on everything from little pool cues to, you know, tiny panfish rods. Uh, what you want to be careful about is not going too light though because these things fight quite a bit and even more than more so than a walleye of the same size and if you go too light you're going to be you're going to spend more time fighting the fish than actually catching fish and not only that but if you can't control the fish real well it's just going to go untangle in everyone else's lines so uh, I'd recommend uh, you know medium to medium light you could even go medium medium heavy uh, but I wouldn't use a panfish light action, uh, maybe even medium light, but might be a little small. But this particular one is a Jason Mitchell 26 inch perch rod. It's what I've used the past three or four years and it really works good. You know, it handles the fish well and and uh, does what it needs to do. I don't, it doesn't even say what the action is on this, but I would consider this probably a medium action. Um, and then I just have a, a small abu reel spooled up with four pound line. Uh, catfish aren't really line shy, so you can get away with six or maybe even eight pound, but uh, I would stick in that four to six pound range. And uh, yeah, that's all you need as far as rods go. Sean!
Well, that's the third one in. Third fish in five minutes. Five minutes we've been here. There's a lot of them. Just like that. Nice little kitty. I also wanted to talk a few things about uh, some of the things you also see in the videos on the ice. Now, everyone who ice fishes probably seen this. It's it's a sonar basically. But the thing is, I get people asking me from the southern regions, you know, what are these electronic gizmos you got in your hole? You know, and that's what she said. But uh, anyways, uh, you have this transducer here, and you've probably seen in the videos. This just sits down in the hole, and this float holds it up in the hole there. But it's essentially it's a sonar. It's no different than the LCD graphs you see in the in the open water, and it's just a way to mark mark your jig and mark the school of fish. And we'll t we'll drill a bunch of holes. We'll take this around, and we'll go from hole to hole and try to find the school of fish. These fish tend to uh, school up in the winter time, and if you can find the big school of fish. Uh, most likely you're going to be on them. So uh, it's, I consider it an essential tool for not only finding fish, but then once you're on the fish to locating where they are in that water column because they'll, if we're fishing in 30 feet, they could be anywhere from 10 feet down all the way down to the bottom. If you don't have this, you don't know, other than just playing the game of trying to adjust your depth up and down. Um, so Definitely have a flasher for sure. Um, well, another thing I wanted to mention was as the sun goes down and it gets darker, what we found is that the fish will actually start, you know, five or six feet suspended off the bottom. And the later it gets, the fish just move down slowly, slowly, slowly. By the end of the night, we're actually fishing right basically on the bottom. So uh, this flasher is good for, for learning that. Uh, you see that school actually move down as the night goes on so um, if you don't have a flasher I would start five feet off the bottom and then work your way down and, until you try to find those fish but uh, without a flasher it's going to be tough I got to be honest with you so uh, that's all I guess I wanted to say about the flasher uh, a couple other th quick things uh, these fish have real tough mouths we end up breaking two or three hooks off a trip it seems just because we just can't get it out of their lips their, their lips are so tough and these small hooks aren't really made for that you know in the summertime the, the hooks are a little bigger and you can be a little more aggressive with them so uh, make sure you have a, a nice needle nose plier so you can get at the tip of that hook to pull it out you're still going to end up breaking off a couple but uh, uh, definitely have pliers with and uh, we're looking for a little bit bigger than that though yeah man that's tough getting out of there we'll see some bigger ones coming here you go coming after dark maybe yeah. Another thing I wanted to mention is that um, we also like single hooks. You know, some of the spoons, a lot of the ice fishing jigs have a, a treble hook, and it's just more problems than it's worth. You, I really don't think you're going to hook up with more fish. You may, but uh, you're going to spend more time on hooking these fish, and uh, I just would re not recommend really using anything with a treble hook on them. And then finally, uh, just a nice towel. You can see this one's pretty dirty, um, but when we're using baits, um, and these slimy fish, it just, you know, gets a little dirty. So, uh, speaking of baits, I'll quickly go over that. Um, crappie minnows, fathead minnows, uh, we just hook the head on, and then we pinch it off. Use maybe half the minnow or the minnow head. You can even use a tail section, but uh, the reason we use these pinched off minnows is not only does it disperse the scent, but also it keeps the minnow from... Uh, moving your bobber and that's kind of the reason we don't use live minnows and I'm going to explain to you why we don't like the bobber to be moved is because these fish bite so light is that uh, as your bobber is sitting here like this I can demonstrate this it might be hard to see as this fish hits it we want to detect any movement of this bobber uh, only the most aggressive cats are going to pull this bobber completely under um, what we're looking for is just a slight waggle or a, just a slow drop and sometimes they won't even take it under and that's why, why I mentioned earlier you want to keep it neutrally buoyant and that's another reason why we won't use a split shot now most people that use uh, walleye rigs will actually put a, a split shot on and then like a live minnow or whatever if we have a split shot halfway up here if this fish comes for, from the bottom up it's got all that slack there and now your bobber's not moving so we never use a split shot. You basically want to be direct to your main line, and that'll 
allow you to detect any bites in the bobber. Um, another bait that we use quite often, especially when the minnows don't seem to be doing well, are chicken livers. The small tub of chicken livers, and we like to keep them frozen or semi-frozen, we keep them on the ice, <clears throat> and we'll just take a knife and we'll cut out nickel quarter-sized chunks and uh, just hook it on the hook so you have a little glob on the hook. Get it. Get a picture. Nice little chunk of liver. <clears throat> now, the problem with livers is they're really soft. That's what one reason we keep them frozen. Uh, basically, every fish you catch, you're going to have to rebate. And also, every fish you miss, if you set the hook or any quick movement, it's going to pull that bait off. Um, so, pay close attention to how often you're baiting. Uh, your bait seems to fall off often, but uh, there's times that nothing works better than chicken liver. So we also we always <clears throat> have them on standby. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll try to put up some footage here. I'm gonna be heading out here in about an hour, so uh, maybe we can catch some fish. I'll put us some up uh, some footage. Wow, we just got here, man. I know. You caught one already? I thought we were supposed to catch the first one this time. Ha <laughs> ha. Dude, he must wow. be a big one. Another one. Is he a big one? A little bit. There you go. There you go. Wow, he's fighting. Fire! Nice one. How many is that for you now? Nine. How many for Dad? Eleven. Eleven for Dad, and how many for me? I think fifteen. Fourteen? Fifteen? Fourteen. All right.